Welcome to Bangor Liberty Friends. Um, we're glad you could make it. Um, obviously, nobody should be worried that you're seeing me running my mouth because Oscar's going to spend most of the time talking, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, before we get started, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, this evening and a beautiful day, sunshine and wind, and um, it's, it's just Every day is an amazement to see how you bless us. Um, we ask that you would settle with us here, um, and that everything we do would bring honor and glory to your name as we listen to Oscar um, talking about Belize and friends' missions there, um, but Oscar talking about himself, um, what, what brings him to this point, um, and that we would be encouraged and that we would be motivated to support Belize and Oscar in everything that they do. Um, we all ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Oscar is, a, um, from, is from Kenya. He is a graduate of Friends Theological College, um, St. Paul's College, and has a uh, PhD from, and I forget the name of the school, from Thailand, I'm sorry, um, in community development. Um, and I'm not going to stand up here and talk a whole lot, so um, welcome Oscar, please. Um, I welcome you all. Tonight, thank you for coming to listen to these conversations around Belize, we, we call it conversations because part of the, my trip as I travel among friends is to hear their thoughts and to hear their prayers and to hear their ideas. Um, because the work that we are doing in Belize is the work that um, involves many people, and since it began to this point, um, that's how it has been built, by people from afar and from near who give their thoughts and, and their ideas, and something is developed out of that. When we began the discernment process, we um, wondered whether we should just draw up a plan and go to implement it, or whether we should use this approach, where we go and talk to friends and share the ideas that are emerging, and we decided to take the second approach. And out of that, um, we've seen God speak through friends, and I'll be sharing some of the, the ideas that have emerged out of conversations. And I think that that is... Um, a good way of, of discernment, um, as friends have done it over the years. So I, I call it conversations. Um, I grew up in Kenya, and I've been to Thailand, and I'm going to Belize. So I'll do snapshots of that, and then um, I hope that at the end of that we will have questions and discussions and so some of the things that I will not have covered um, can be addressed during the questions and conversations time. I am a third generation Kenyan, Quaker. My mother was, is a pastor. Uh, my father was a soldier. He died when I was five years old. And so we were raised on a, on a large farm by our mother, but I thank God that she knew what we needed, um, she knew where we were supposed to do, and she was very hardworking. And out of that, um, five of us reached university, and that is an amazing job. And um, when I visited Belize in April and saw young people, some of them who are living with grandparents, others who don't know where their parents are, I thought, well, um, staying with them and sharing a testimony that it is possible. Um, 
will be something of their encouragement. And thinking of the church as this place where people can come and find what they cannot find at home um, is something that is, to me, that is the gospel. Um, as I'll be sharing about that as we continue. Um, even though my mother was a pastor, I did not think of having a personal relationship with God. I thought that because she was a pastor, affairs between God and us had been taken care of by her. And so I, I never grew up thinking that God would use me or it was something that was um, going to be part of my life. And so in 2003, our neighbor who was very close to us died. And um, they were Catholics. And in Kenya, funerals are um, like public functions. You'd have like a whole village go there. But most young people would go during the evening and um, adults would go during the day. So I had been there during the evening and I didn't want to go the following day. But my mother pushed me a little bit. She said, you are 21 years, you need to be involved in community work, and the place to start, you must be there during the day and see what other people are doing. So I, I went and um, stood at a distance, and I watched the, the Roman Catholic priest conduct a funeral mass. And he read Mark 16:16, 16, 16, the, the text where women are going to the tomb and they are asking themselves who will roll away the stone. And I thought that was a mistake. I said, I know this text, we read it during the Easter. And um, ha seeing a priest read that in a funeral, I thought he was mistaken. So I listened keenly, waiting for him to change the text. But then he began talking about hope in the face of death. And to me, that became my turning point. I began having a conversation within myself, saying, what is this mystery that makes people say what they say when they read scripture? And so the, I had a conversation within me, one that said, just forget about it, and the other one that said, can you pursue scripture more? And because I had made... Um, a resolution that my mother had already taken care of affairs with God, I wanted to resolve it. So after weeks I said I'll go and ask my mother about it and say, is it good for young people to go to seminary and study scripture? If she laughs at me, I'll, I'll not pursue that idea anymore. If she doesn't, then I'll think about it again. So I went and asked her and she instead said, I go and talk to the monthly meeting pastor. So I went and talked with him and he said, I think it could be something more than um, just understanding the mystery behind reading scripture. So he suggested that I go to Friends Theological College and spend some time there, um, be with other ministers and pursue this mystery. So my time at Friends Theological College was a moment of discernment. All people who were there were already pastors. They knew their calling. They knew why they were there and where God was leading them. For me, it was just understanding this mystery and trying to find out what, is the purpose, what was the God's purpose for my life. And so one evening, I went to the library, and there was a table that had magazines. So I picked up a magazine a Quaker Life magazine, and began to read from the first page, the second page. And then I got to the page that I had an article about Belize. And God spoke to me that I'll go to Belize. So I closed the magazine. And then I went to the map and looked at where Belize was. And then I left the library and went to the hostel to sleep. I thought... I'm a last born in, at home, and last borns are socialized to remain at home. They don't go out. So the best way to do this was just to keep quiet about it. But then the voice didn't stop, 
And we had um, Wednesday convocations at Friends Theological College where you would sit in a group and talk about how God had been working in your life the previous week. So I shared this in the group, and um, the group members suggested that I talk to the faculty. I went and asked Patrick Nugent, who was then the principal, what am I going to do in Belize? And he said, I don't know what you, you'll be doing there, but if you pray and wait, and if God wants to see you there, one day he's going to open the door for you to go. So that was 2003. I graduated um, from Friends Theological College in 2007, went to St. Paul's University, did pastoral ministry, and Belize was still on my heart. Went to Thailand, and Belize was still on my heart until um, a year or two ago when we had the, the conversations with Friends United meeting and we began the discernment process. So I, I can look um, over a period of more than 10 years and see God keep something alive in me, something that I did not understand, something that I could not have cultivated myself, and something that I was afraid of doing, because it, it was beyond my imagination. And so, this is the, the hope that carries me as I move towards Belize, that God is faithful, and he can do, and he can walk with me, and he can help me work, do his work, even in ways that, that, I, that I do not understand. And even when I don't think it can happen, this is the faith that makes me to make the next step, and the next step, and to keep going, and to see what God is working um, in the lives of the people that I'm working with, um, in my own life, and in, and in the, um, the life of the ministry that we are called to do. And then I'll just give a short, a sh a short snapshot about um, my studies in Thailand and what I think would be helpful for the Belize ministry. Um, while I was in Thailand, I worked with Transparency International. And it was um, a good thing for the program because we needed to get some practical experience. Even as we, we, work, we did coursework and research, uh, that was a, a good component of the of the study because it gave us a, a different dimension to, to issues of community development. So I worked with Transparency International. Transparency International is a German organization that is in a number of countries and they deal with mad, a range of issues in community from social justice to um, human trafficking and so on. But in Thailand the key, the major problem was human trafficking. Um, people who are trafficked into Thailand or through Thailand or out of Thailand. And mostly were young people or teenagers who were looking for work and they would be trafficked to go and work in the fishing vessels or uh, in, in commercial sex industry or in the shoemaking industry and other industries. So we dealt basically with cases that were reported and this would be, for instance, um, a family that loses their son or daughter to human traffickers, or um, a trafficked person who runs away from the traffickers and finds himself in a church or in a community, and um, such cases are brought to Transparency International to help out. And one of the things that I've seen, while in Belize there may not be issues of human trafficking, there's the issue of suffering. The suffering is the same. They are dealing with a different um, form of violence, 
um, young people who are being recruited into drug gangs and who have no hope for the future and they are living with their grandparents and they are being raised with the hope that they can have a better future. So this is part of the, the work that we will be doing and this is something that you can pray about. When you have a, a community that is suffering, the place to be is the church. And, and beyond ideas, we need the Spirit of God. We need strength. We need courage. We need uh, God to raise from time to time people with the resilience and faith to come into this ministry and provide hope. So I will go and um, give a brief um, presentation on the work that we are doing in Belize. Most of us know where Belize is. It's in Central America. It is a British colony. It was a British colony until recently. Um, it's a very multicultural community. with a population of about 380,000 people. The Friends are working in the south side of Belize City. That is the, the area that they call, not that they call, that is the area that is poorest compared to the northern side. So this is where Friends have been for over 25 years, um, providing a school that gives the last chance or the second chance to young people. We have three different groups at the school at the moment. The, the first group are this, the young people who fail to pass primary school examination and with a British system like the one in Belize, if you fail that then your life comes to an end. There's nowhere you can go. So they come to the school to spend one year or two years um, to work on science and mathematics and language and social studies and have an opportunity to reset the examination again. The second group um, of young people are those who, whose grandparents find it difficult and they could drop out of school and they come and they ask uh, for, for friends' school to accommodate them for one year or two. The third group is... Um, a few um, teenagers who are referred to friends' school by the police or the judge, where the police say, instead of sending this kid to jail, I'll send him to friends' school. Or the judge decides that and they, they send them there. So basically, they are troubled young people who need um, a moment of restoration beyond sciences and language and mathematics. And this is one of the reasons that Friends United Meeting is expanding the ministry to have a church connected to the school and a community center that can be able to provide a pastoral background to the school and be the presence of Christ within the immediate community. So, those are the three things that prevail in the South Side community. So whether you are reading a newspaper or you are reading a book or listening to radio or watching television, you see the four things uh, um, emerge again and again. There could be other problems, but these are the most um, common and prevailing issues. There are other churches in Belize, but through the discernment process that FUM had, 
friends have values that make this context prophetic. That if you have a faith, like the, the faith of the friends, where you have values like this, these values become prophetic in a context like that. And, and this is the uniqueness of, of having a church that works with the community and with the school in this particular context because they provide a more holistic transformation. And, and the good thing with these values is that you can apply them in anything, in business, in daily life, in, in decision-making, in, in any um, kind of work that you may be engaging in. And um, we think that when we see um, the judge or the police give friends school a young man who would have, whose life would have been destroyed. We, we think that that is prophetic. And, and we see the work of God in that. And we hope that the, having the community of, of um, friends in this place would help save lives. And when these young men have grown up and they are able to live a more meaningful life, they will thank God and they'll be of, of help to their community than when their lives would have ended on the street. So the expansion of the Friends Ministry is moving towards worship, leadership development, community building, and economic empowerment. And uh, my work will be to work with youth and families to build relationships, provide pastoral counseling and chaplaincy to the school, discipleship, teach religious studies at the school, and do relational evangelism. And so, the work of the friends over the years on the south side of Belize has already given us a place to start. We have a, a good testimony. We have young people who are troubled and they are coming to us. And it gives us the place to begin as we look forward to be involved more in the community. And we have a building that was purchased recently that hosts the school, um, a place of worship, and a community center. So we have a place that we can be able to um, work um, from as we engage the community. And I think of this place as the, the well of Jacob in, in John chapter 4. That Jacob prepared or bought or might have purchased the well. I'm not sure how he got it. But it was basically for his descendants to draw water from. But then in, in the story of the conversation between Jesus and Samaritan woman, a conversation begins around the well that leads to the reconciliation of the community, that leads to healing. And, and this is how I think of this place, that it will be just that place of healing and hope and transformation for adults and, and young people who will walk to that place, that their lives will be changed. They'll find um, a meaning in Christ, a meaning in relationships, and they'll be able to see another face of life that they did not see before. So we, we, will, we are looking forward to communicate not only the presence of Christ, but the presence of the, the, presence of the friends in the community. It's a community. It's a community of faith that cares about the lives of the people who are in that community. Um, this picture shows the roof the rooftop of the of the the building and 
when we have events like graduation or when we have work teams that have been doing work for a week or for two weeks, we hold a celebration on the rooftop and we invite members of the community to participate. And there is a, a small um, community of friends that is emerging um, in Belize. About eight to ten people who have been drawn to the faith of the friends. And we, we just believe that it will continue to grow, that the Spirit of God will work in us and, and show us how to be good witnesses so that we can grow beyond that point and and spread as God leads us and as God gives us the ability to do that. This picture is about um, adults. We've had cases before where adult parents would come to the school and say, we want to study with our children. And that was just difficult. And so last year they began the um, adult education program. It has just begun. And the idea was to help adults who need education from the community to get at least a certificate and see whether they can continue with um, adult education at college level or so on. But we are trusting God that we can go beyond that and find ways that we can offer alternative education that can give adults basic skills to do something. For instance, entrepreneurial skills or other related skills. We don't know what that is at the moment, and that, that is part of the reason we share stories, hoping that somebody um, who has some experience will be called to do or share with us something but there is a great need to empower uh, parents as we empower young people as well. Because if you, if you don't have any certificate in police, you cannot do anything, including sweeping the streets. You need at least a certificate to do that. And so um, we've had stories of, of parents who had, not, who had no options but to engage in prostitution or young people who had no option but to be recruited in gangs. And so having something that gives such a person a transformation and an alternative skill is a gospel. It is a saving experience. It is that powerful. It changes the soul, the mind, and the life, and everything. That is one way we can experience resurrection in, in a real life situation. Um, the people in Belize love music and we, we think, why not? Why not engage in a little bit of that? Um, if, if it is their, their language, we just hope that Christ can incarnate in that um, and so if, if you have someone who knows how to play a keyboard or a guitar and you can come to Belize and spend a week and teach guys some music um, this, this picture is about um, the trip we, we had in Belize and when we were moving equipments and, and all things from the old school to the new building. And we had conversations that began around, around this, this picture with um, Mike Kane and the Babas. And it is based on their experiences as principals at the French school. They say that when they took a few young people from the school and took them out um, of the school environment and stayed with them and just talked about life experiences. When 
they returned them to school, their lives changed. And so when we were in Belize, we were saying, why not continue that kind of ministry? Um, maybe do a little bit of camping. Maybe um, make this community center a place where we have young people who don't know much about life, and we have somebody who knows something about life. And we can have a platform where they can learn something that nobody would have told them because they really don't have these people in their families to tell them. They are either dead or have disappeared, or they don't know where they are. Um, yeah. That picture is about me and soccer in Thailand. It's not about Belize. I lived in Thailand for six years. The first two years I did not play soccer and I knew very few people and I knew very little about the community I lived in. Um, and I was living next to a soccer field. So one day I was in my apartment and I saw guys play soccer. and So I went down, went to the sports shop, I bought my t-shirt and my short and the shoes and the next day I joined them. And then in the three years I did that, I learned a lot of things that I would have never known about that society. And I made some meaningful friendships that I would have not known if I was not playing with these guys. And I invited some people to church, um, which I could not have done on the street. Because it, it was only during playing that somebody would ask whether I was a Christian or a Muslim. And in a Buddhist society, it is very difficult to explain Jesus because everything is new. And you, you have to explain Jesus and then God and Mary and all this and it is a very, very long story you cannot finish and you don't want to make people frustrated. So just saying I'm a Christian and please come to judge and have an experience of that um, was the best evangelism I, I found. And we have some people who came to judge and they never returned again but we have those who came and came again and came again and came again and at some point they became Christians. And I'm, I'm just thinking that um, a Central and South American context where people love soccer, um, this could be something that we can do and people can find some meaningful relationships in that. Um, those who have a desire to come closer to Jesus Christ, can find an opportunity for that. But even to go beyond soccer, not everybody plays soccer. We have people who, who do other games and they're interested in, into that. How we can just expand that and go beyond soccer so that we have many choices that young people can find, can choose from. And um, we can just have this um, experience where we are tailoring ministry around the priorities and talents of young people. So um, I think my presentation comes to an end and this is the, the verse that I read as I travel. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go I will cancel you and watch over you. Thank you.
we're going to have uh, we have you have all received a yellow sheet in the brochure I think most of you have that is for you to write a question down we're going to have a time of prayer and we're going to take an offering if you make a check out make it out to Friends United Meeting and put in the memo line Oscar Mbali. Um, we'll go downstairs for lunch and at that time um, we'll collect your questions and he will have a chance to answer your questions downstairs while we share in some lunch. Our Father God, we thank you for this time that we have had together. We thank you for your calling of Oscar to serve us in Belize. We pray for him as he goes forward. May he know that we here hold him up in prayer. You are the Alpha and Omega, the great I Am. You go before us. You prepare the way. You call us to you, and you walk beside us. This we ask for Oscar. We ask that you would bless each one here that they might sense your calling to support Oscar in his ministry. And we ask your blessing upon this offering tonight. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen.